morning. Wake up, you all. My name is Vibrio Fasuria, and today's topic is bacterial communication. Who cares about bacteria? They're just little more than microscopic rigid vessels filled with amorphous cytoplasm and only a single strand of DNA with few genes. These single-celled opportunists aren't good at anything besides self-replication. They just grow and divide and grow and divide some more. How boring. Boring? Listen, Buster, after I tell you what I do for you, you will care. We bacteria are highly sophisticated and bursting with interactions. Without us, you wouldn't even be alive. We do a lot of work for you every day. We serve as an invisible armor for humans and keep environmental insults out so that you all can stay healthy. Believe it or not, you have a hundred trillion bacterial cells in your gut and only 10 trillion human cells that make up your entire body. So, at any given moment in your life, there are 10 times more of us in you or on you. Since your cells are bigger, you might be human by weight, but by number, you're 90% bacterial. Neat, huh? That's not all. We also educate your immune system to keep bad microbes and viruses out. Hello? Larry. Brain here. We've got a breach in Sector 6. What happened? Paper cut. Viruses and bacteria have broken into the body. How much time do I have? Not much. You'll have to travel through the blood vessels to get there fast. And for God's sake, be careful, Larry. I will. <laughs> It's time we show these pathogens who the real head honchos are around here. ATTACK! Does the word vaccination ring a bell? Doctors and scientists are using dead or weakened bacteria to prevent other bacterial diseases. Furthermore, my relatives make many of your drugs, hormones, antibodies, and vitamins, and even digest your food. We help red rice, make alcohol, and help with the production of dairy products such as yogurt, buttermilk, sour cream, and cheese. Can you imagine your hamburger without cheese? Or your chilies without sour cream? The possibilities are endless. Moreover, we are avid social contributors to the ecosystem. We decompose dead organisms and release nutrients into the air and soil to be used by autotrophs and heterotrophs to make food. We fix atmospheric nitrogen into more simpler substances called nitrites that can be used by plants. Some of us decompose compost and sewage and help make methane, a very important natural gas and fuel for you humans. The list of favors is still ongoing in your commercial industries. We help in tanning, making linen, currying tea and tobacco leaves, extracting precious metals from rock, coloring foods, coloring cosmetics, tenderizing meat, removing stains, processing paper and cloth, changing one chemical into another, and much more. The point is, we are important. The earth would probably be the barren wasteland it was 4.6 billion years ago. If we never showed up, where would you humans be without us? Unfortunately, not all my siblings are as friendly as me. And when they get into your bodies, they cause all sorts of problems such as cholera, tuberculosis, pneumonia, septicemia, ulcers, Lyme disease, stomach cancer, and bubonic plague. You must be wondering how in the world we do all of this when we're so small, right? One word. Teamwork. We work collectively and communicate between ourselves and with higher plants and animals to accomplish these tasks. Surprised? Well, if you could talk, why can't we? Let me show you how it works. 
Let's start with direct communication. The quickest way we share genetic information is by pumping DNA from one sibling directly into another through very thin walled invisible tubes called pili that form a bridge between the two cells. Pili from the donor cell attach to the recipient cell bringing the two cells closer together. The mobile plasmid is nicked to allow a single strand of DNA to enter the other cell. Both cells recirculate their plasmids, synthesize second strands, and reproduce pili. Now both can be donors. This bacterial conjugation is a mechanism of horizontal gene transfer and allows us to share genetic memories and innovations very quickly, such as antibiotic resistance or the ability to use a new metabolite. You could think of it as an equivalent to sexual reproduction or mating. Bacteria can also exchange DNA through transformation and transduction. Transformation allows us to uptake naked DNA and mediate the exchange of any part of a chromosome. Transduction involves a transfer of DNA by phage and requires the donor and the recipient to share self-surface proteins for phage binding. The length of DNA transferred is limited to the size of the phage head. In both, the donor sequences can be incorporated into the recipient chromosome by genetic recombination. We also communicate along a less direct asexual path by sending messages to each other using small organic proteins called homocerine lactones or autoinducers, sort of like pheromones. They can alter the behavior of thousands of other bacteria at the same time and establish environmental parameters such as population density, stress levels of the entire bacterial community, and pH levels. These social interactions are very important for us because they determine our movements, chemical activities, and even the reproduction of individual bacteria. Let me show you how this works in my hometown. My family and I live in shallow waters off the coast of Hawaii, where we swim free during the day. We secrete autoinducers, but our population is too low for the signals to initiate any response. At night, we all gather at our homes in the light organs of the nocturnal bobtail squid. The squid cells supply us with food and our population soar to high levels. The extracellular amount of the signaling molecule increases proportionally to cell number. So, by being more tightly packed in our cozy homes, the concentration of the autoinducers increases. Next, my parents take a census of our family and the rest of the population and the chemical votes get counted. Once the critical mass or quorum of bacteria and autoinducers reaches the desired threshold, everyone responds to the votes. Small RNAs integrate the signals to initiate a behavior. The autoinducers feel like a lock and key into a signal receptor protein on the bacterial cell surface and enter the bacteria to initiate the LUXR protein. Activated LUXR stimulates our genes to produce light-producing enzymes such as luciferin and luciferase, along with additional autoinducer messengers to be released from the cell.